I was born to be an addict, sister, he said. And I'm going to die an addict, too, he said. It's in my blood, sister, he said. I'm a hopeless case. I don't think you should waste your time on me anymore, he said. He shuffled his feet, and he stared into my eyes, and he lifted his shoulders slowly and made a gentle shrug. I could almost hear the bones rattle under his clothes when he moved. Everything about him, his dirty hair, his hollow eyes, his pale skin, his tattered clothes, seemed tired and lifeless and old. He was breathing air in and out, but he wasn't really living anymore. He was a kid just making time until he turned the page on the last chapter of his life. His story didn't look like it had much longer to go. I know things don't seem that good right now, Freddy, I said, but there's always hope. I know you can make it, I said. He smiled softly and crinkled his eyes and shook his head slowly as my final words drifted out. I wish I could believe that, he said. I used to, you know, he said. But that was a long, long time ago. I'm not trying to be a wise guy or anything, sister, he said. I'd give anything in the world to not be an addict. But I can't beat this thing. I've been through treatments lots of times already, he said. It's hopeless. I'm hopeless. It's just in my blood. He shrugged his shoulders again as tears began to form in the corners of his eyes and drop down his face. I felt so powerless at that moment, watching him stand there, drowning in his desperation, waiting for a death he felt was inevitable. Nothing about his life had ever been easy. He had been born 17 years ago in one of those small old mill towns in the Northeast, the kind of town where industry and hope left town and never looked back at what was left behind. Unable to find work, unable to cope, his parents both took to drinking as a way to escape their sorrow. Sometimes when the drink wasn't enough to ease their pain, they took their frustrations out on Freddy. Many nights, Freddy found himself hiding in the house, in closets, and under beds, trying to escape a beating that had by that point become an almost weekly ritual. Afraid and desperate to please his parents, Freddy began drinking with them in order to show he was on their side. Soon, well before he had become a teenager, he found himself hooked on alcohol, unable to pry himself loose from the grip it had on him. It's in my blood, sister, he said to us that first day. I was born an addict. There's nothing you can do to help me. One day, when the beatings got to be too much, he fled to the streets to find a peace he had never known. Instead, he found what all kids find, the aloneness, hunger, fatigue, and darkness of an unforgiving world in the street. He was 16 years old. For one full year, Freddy struggled to find some kind of existence on the streets. He slept in alleys and ate out of garbage cans. He began to forget how scared and alone he was, and he began experimenting with drugs, hoping they would somehow help him escape his pain. He died a little, day by day. Then he found Covenant House. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to turn out for him. I'm hoping, I guess some would say against hope, that it's not too late to reach him, that it's not too late for him to believe, and it's not too late for him to finally become an ad overcome an addiction that has an ironclad grip on every ounce of his body. I do know that as long as he is alive, I have hope that we can turn his life around. And as long as we have friends like you, we will have the means to make that life-saving turnaround possible. I can't thank you enough for that. You literally do make the difference between life and death for these kids. I want you to know something, Freddy, I said. I still think you are going to make it, I said. Just give us the chance, I said. I could tell by the look in his eyes that he hoped I was right. I'd like to try, he said. I reached you out and hugged oh, excuse me. I reached out and hugged him. Thank you, God, I whispered to myself. That was three months ago. I must admit I wasn't super hopeful that we could help. He was in such bad shape. But now I've got incredible, wonderful news. Freddy's turnaround has been remarkable. Ever since that first night I met Freddy, we've been watching over him like a whole flock of mother hens. We went through drug and alcohol addiction program and really worked hard. It wasn't easy for him. He went through hell, but he kept going. Now he's feeling good. 
He no longer believes he is destined to die on the streets. He has an important job working for a company that cleans up hazardous waste. He takes it very seriously and just got a special license. He has put on weight. I hardly recognize him. The transformation has just been remarkable. Not every kid turns around this dramatically, you know that. But sometimes when you give what you give kids like Freddy is miraculous. The before and after pictures of this kid are a tribute to your love and care. Of course, three months of sobriety is only a beginning for someone battling this kind of addiction. He's still got a long way to go, and we're going to work with him to make sure he stays totally connected to a support system that can help him stay on the right path. It won't be easy for him, but I really feel he's going to make it. Thank you for helping, Freddy. Thank you for helping me show him that he is not hopeless. Thank you for helping us show him that God loves him. I thank God for you every day. Those are the words of the late Sister Mary Rose McGeady in her best-selling book, Sometimes God Has a Kid's Face. Uh, it is to promote and let people know and be aware of Covenant House, a organization that has been around since the 90s that helps kids on the streets find a home, find a place, and find love. This, this whole organization is very important to me. I can't explain why. I just, I just immediately connect with the good that they try to spread. And I encourage you to spread it as well. Make a donation. Be, be loving towards your, your friends and neighbors. and Make sure that all kids know that there's a place for them. It doesn't matter if it's in the home with their parents. It doesn't matter if it's in the world in a career. But there's a place for them where they don't have to be cold. And they don't have to be hungry. And they don't have to deal with the fact that life is hopeless. Because if treated right, if treated with love, then life is full of hope. I'll see you guys later.